Hi, friends. Today we'll discuss fat. What you probably not only didn't know, but even didn't hear or guess. Very useful information for soberly dealing with excess weight, understanding where it comes from, how to fight it, and in which cases you don't need to fight it. This information is very powerful and will radically differ from what you, perhaps, are used to hearing. Therefore, hit like and let's get started. Very often I see on social networks, especially beginner fitness trainers, love to do this. Criticize someone saying, go lose weight and you are like this and you are not like that. Remember friends, first of all, not always a person looks the way that you don't like. And this is considered some kind of disease. Many people have in their heads, and I see this in interviews, that weight loss is always work more, eat less. And I had a podcast with a dietitian when he answered this question very ambiguously for you, and you started to hate this specialist. I realized that there is a huge gap in your knowledge, and I just have to close it. First, let's understand what fat is in general. In the understanding of many of you, fat is just a cell, in which, like gasoline in a gas tank, we also have three glycerides there. In fact, if you look at the anatomy, the cell looks very complex. And when we talk about a fat unit, these are arterial venous lymphatic vessels. All this surrounds the fat tissue and forms a very complex mechanism. I'll just tell you one simple thing right away. Fat cells under external influence can release up to 50 signal molecules. Up to 50 signal molecules. If you ask those guys who are watching now to name at least five, nobody will name anything. Learn to match. Some signal molecules regulate inflammation and immunity. Others control appetite and others actively manage glucose levels. The fourth governs the cellular immune response. That is, there are a huge number of signal molecules through which fat strongly affects your entire body. Therefore, fat is not just a depot of nutrients. This is not the case. And this understanding how important this is should be in your head. Remember once. Second, understanding the different types of fat is crucial. When dealing with obesity, it's important to comprehend where the fat originates, where it accumulates, and its negative or positive impacts. First, there are three classifications of fat. Subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat, you know what it is? Yes, it's the folds on the stomach. Second, it's the visceral type of obesity. Visceral obesity refers to a situation often seen in men with hormonal obesity, where the stomach bulges internally. Despite no apparent subcutaneous fat when pinched, there's internal growth. When I operate on such patients, I really suffer during the operation because you can't turn around there. Everything is uncomfortable. There is little space. Everything is in fat, and absolutely everything is in fat. This includes the intestines, such fat deposits on the intestines, and the omentum is enlarged. The omentum is such an apron that covers your intestines and goes from the side of the stomach. Also our kidneys, on which I often perform operations, the kidneys are located in the fat cocoon. And all these types of fat are different. There is, as I already said, visceral fat, there is subcutaneous fat, and there is a third type of fat that we most often encounter in sick people. This is so-called ectopic fat. Let's take a large obese man, do an ultrasound on him, and we'll see that he most likely has fat in his liver. Or we see a disruption of the muscle fiber in which fat infiltrations appear. This is a sign of a metabolically unhealthy person. This is called ectopic fat, remember? Subcutaneous visceral ectopic. And now about the very structure of fat. Here is all the fat in the body, all of it. It is divided into three types of fat. And this depends on whether it secretes fat or does not secrete it. Leptin and thermogenin. Leptin is what essentially controls your appetite. When leptin increases, appetite decreases. When leptin decreases, appetite intensifies. Thermogenin, on the other hand, affects temperature. And the fat that doesn't have thermogenin doesn't warm you up. This is your subcutaneous fat, the jiggly fat, that people often say is unattractive. This is so-called white fat. There's no thermogenin in it, so it doesn't warm you up. But there is leptin in it. Remember now, which fat warms us up? It's the so-called brown fat. Brown fat is associated with babies. That's why babies are very good at tolerating cold temperatures and can survive longer when exposed somewhere. They survive longer. 
And white fat differs from brown fat in that brown fat contains thermogenin, meaning it can generate heat, it warms you up. Where is this fat located in our body? It's under the skin, around large vessels. It's the interlobular zone, and therefore these places are very rarely cooled in your body. Remember when was the last time your armpits were icy? It's extremely rare. Apart from these two things, we can also divide them by the number of mitochondria. I'll remind you that a mitochondrion is an energy factory, and it is in every cell of our body. In white fat, the cell looks like fat. There are many mitochondria there, but very few. In brown fat, it can actively help us maintain temperature because there are many mitochondria and little fat. Is there a right fat, so to speak, for those who have taken the right path? It's called as, as it's called, no. Beige fat, no kidding. What is beige fat? It's fat that was once white, and it has become more like brown because a person is engaged in sports. That is, it's fat that has changed its structure. There are more mitochondria, less fat, because a person is actively engaged in sports, leads a healthy lifestyle. That is, it's a sign that a person, but this, by the way, is not always the case, that a person is engaged in sports, and he looks good. I often cite professional UFC fighters and boxers as prime examples. You've probably seen a man last 12 rounds in a professional boxing match, and yet he's fat. That is, he's resilient, he's strong, but at the same time, he's fat. Despite his physical efforts, he's not thin. All these camp preparations don't make you thin. So, whether someone is losing, maintaining, or gaining weight, it's important to realize that hormones, neurology, and ecology play a role. It's complex with many factors. If someone advises you to simply eat less, disregard them. This person is simply uneducated or illiterate. And if your trainer tells you this, then change your trainer. Friends, I share all the latest research, my own developments, absolutely free on my Telegram channel. The link to my Telegram channel is below this video. Another crucial detail many trainers neglect or are unaware of. First, myth. The misconception that the body's fat content is fixed and unchangeable. This is not true. The amount of fat in the body increases, but the number of adipocytes, these are fat cells that you have, it can only increase two or three times. But there are people who reach gigantic sizes. Due to what? Because the increase in fat in the body, obesity specifically, it occurs not only under the influence of hypertrophy. Hypertrophy refers to the enlargement and formation of new fat cells. Periadipocytes are a type of cells. Around the adipocyte, there are cells influenced by external factors such as poor endocrine composition, bad hormones, overeating, and low activity. That is, you stimulate them and they proliferate and grow into healthy adipocytes. And so the number of adipocytes increases due to the fact that from these precursor cells, you have formed an adipocyte under the influence of your improper lifestyle, which begins to attract fat like a regular adipocyte. Adipocytes renew very slowly. Only 10% of adipocytes are renewed each year, and they live very long. 10 years is the lifespan of an adipocyte. So those pieces of fat on your waist, most likely, you ate, possibly, 10 years ago. And indeed, in a literal sense, you're carrying on your waist now a burger that you ate somewhere on a weekend 10 years ago and only in 10 years, it will be renewed. Therefore, when only 10% of adipocytes are renewed each year, so these fat deposits that you have been carrying for a long time, some of them you ate 10 years ago. This is true. There is a very interesting feature of adipocytes when they become too large and their nutrition is disrupted. Well, has grown just to a fat component and its nutrition has deteriorated because the larger the area needs to be nourished and the worse all this works. It begins to release inflammatory factors into the bloodstream, into the body. That is, people who have a lot of fat, they have a stronger inflammation in the body. Joints hurt more often, atherosclerosis occurs more often, and many hormones, including sex hormones, work worse because of this inflammatory environment that forms in the body. And therefore, a really thin person might be a healthier person. Importantly, some people, like professional fighters, naturally won't be thin due to the concept of a comfortable genetic weight. A vast amount of research, available through regular reading and fresh publications, has long validated the concept of comfortable weight. These 220 pounds and formulas of height 
weight are not quite accurate. There's a man who naturally weighs 100 kilograms. In any of his efforts to lose weight, like I hang, for example, 110, any of my efforts to lose weight, I get to 100 kilograms, the body will resist. Why resist? It's an uncomfortable weight for him. And when losing weight, he will, due to the play of hormones, increase my appetite and slow down my metabolism. Conversely, as I gain weight, reaching, say, 120 or 286 pounds, my appetite will decrease and my metabolism will increase. Your body will try its best to return you to your comfortable weight. Your comfortable weight, most often, is the weight you had around when you were 15 or 20 years old. This is the weight that you can maintain through a healthy lifestyle. Everything else, the later accumulations. How is it formed, you often ask? By the way, if you're interested, hit like if you find this topic interesting, and we'll continue further. Primarily, it's formed under the influence of your genetics. Therefore, a fat father is likely to have a fat son. Genetics is very important. And so the fat will often be deposited in the same places where it is deposited in your father. Observe that if your father has a belly, so do you. Or if your mother has thigh fat, your sister also has fat in the same area. Secondly, everything depends on what happens inside the womb when your mother's carrying you. And if during the time of your gestation, your mother experiences a lot of stress, she continues, like many women, to work until seven or eight months. Her boss at work is making her blood boil. She endures it. All of this negatively affects the child and increases the chances that the child will have problems with excess weight. Why? Because the adrenal hormones, which are released into the bloodstream under stress, also affect the child. And it is they who will increase the risk that the child will have problems with excess weight. And another factor is the child's nutrition, how balanced it is in the first years of life. To return the child to a healthy figure and turn him into an athlete who will not be prone to obesity, teaching him to eat properly at 15 will not work. Most likely, he will be much more prone to obesity because the time was missed. The missed time, statistically, when all this is laid down, is formed, it is up to three to five years of life. Naturally, you realize this potential. You gain it. But all this is formed, and these predispositions are formed, which will give certain changes already against the background of puberty at a sufficiently young age. Therefore, it is critically important to understand clearly that the person sitting in front of you is perhaps not lazy, not because he is full, but because he is unfortunately such by nature. The main thing is to be healthy, not to satisfy the demands of society. Because today beauty is thin, tomorrow beauty is fat. Everyone has their own understanding of a healthy, comfortable weight. And you don't need to impose your principles on someone or judge someone because they are different from you. This is nonsense. It's unconstructive. It's ill-mannered. Share your height and weight in the comments. Personally, in terms of height and weight, I fall into the second degree of obesity. You'll realize that height and weight aren't informative. Let's take a look. Friends, share your life stories. Now understanding what excess weight is, how it appears, how hard it sometimes is for you to lose weight. If you have problems with weight loss or with gaining, despite the fact that you eat right and exercise, prove to our haters that they are wrong, that there are indeed a large number of people who can't lose weight, not because of their willpower, or can't gain weight in the context that society assumes a healthy man should look like. Tell your own stories in the comments and read each other's stories. And for the three best life stories, I will give away three sets of my Ipsen vitamins. It's up to you. Follow the link under this video to choose vitamins. I will choose the story that gets the most likes, the one that I like the most, and the one that my team likes the most. Friends, hello. I want to remind you that I have Ipsum Vitamins, which I created with love primarily for my family, for my friends, and now for my child, because in the near future, possibly when this video is already out, there will be a children's line and sports nutrition, including I plan to do. And to, I try to choose the best raw materials, use the best production technologies, and on my own factory, which is located in a special economic zone in Dubna, I make vitamins for you which I am proud of and for which I answer with my reputation. And therefore, my surname and signature are on every jar. Friends, thank you for trusting. Thank you for tens of thousands of positive reviews, for the ratings you give our vitamins, and for believing. And you trust the most important achievement in your life to me. This is your health. 
be happy. The link to the vitamins is under this video. But that's not all. This is bioimpedance. It happens quite often. A diving test. It's quite enough. Such things happen. A diving test. That is, there is more water in the body. The test can greatly distort the changes you need to know how to read. Real impedance measurement. It is performed with immersion in water. That is, there are professional devices that can really accurately, but this is with immersion in water. And all these in the halls, which need to be interpreted, they always have a sufficiently large margin of error. Do you require it or is it just so? The best way is to measure it. You know, let's say you're working out, you measured your arm, or let's say your leg, thigh, waist, you take a photo because I often have what is called a very important person. I want to lose five kilograms. I'm saying that you want to lose five kilograms, or you have an image in your head that you associate with looking a certain way, and you need to lose five kilograms. Because I look at him and understand that he doesn't need to lose five kilograms. He needs to gain five kilograms, and he will look the way he wants to. And losing five kilograms, most likely due to muscle loss. Because he's already skinny, he will look even worse. He'll lose weight, feel the need to lose more, and remain dissatisfied with his figure. How many photos exist where a girl has gained weight and looks better? Or did she lose weight and now looks worse? Did she lose weight inappropriately and it's uncomfortable for her? It's crucial to identify the type of obesity a person has, if they are indeed obese. Because there is actually primary obesity, there is secondary. There are really cases when a person overeats and there is no disease at all. And there are cases when a person does not overeat. But there is an endocrinological substrate, and it's very bad when a person has an endocrine problem. They just chase him into the gym without checking his health, because it will be, at a minimum, counterproductive and destructive for him. It's better than doing nothing, but if a person really has a large excess of mass, a large excess of mass is more than 10%, because it is considered that 10% of your norm, if you have added from above and continue to gain easily, then there is some endocrinopathy. Here it is desirable that your tests were looked at by an endocrinologist or your trainer, if he understands this. Why obesity at all? Where did all this come from if nature is so smart and tries to do everything? Actually, obesity isn't bad. It used to be a form of survival. If a person was prone to obesity, it means that the person was in conditions where it was necessary for him to survive. But now it's no longer a survival factor. And statistically, the number of obese people in the world has now surpassed the number of people who are starving, not eating regularly. Essentially, the hunger issue could be solved if those who overeat shared, eliminating world hunger. Now, food is available, there is little physical activity, practically no significance to overeating. Therefore, unfortunately, let's face the truth, excess weight today has far more negatives than positives. Honestly, I am against the distorted body positivity which is imposed on everyone, that love yourself anyway. Interestingly, you can love yourself as a person, but if you have external excess fat, which leads to the fact that your risk of many diseases increases, then I think you can blame your genetics indefinitely. A strong person will take the situation into his own hands and improve his health, through diet, through sports, through the right attitude towards oneself in the form of correct habits. Body positivity, even when a person lacks arms, legs, when he has a birthmark on his face, yes. But when a person has terminal obesity and he says, love me, respect me as I am, no. This is about disrespect for oneself. Distorted body positivity implies self-neglect. That's it. Have a great day, all. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.